Hello everyone and welcome back to my video series on the Starship Troopers Terran Command Scenario Editor. In today's video, I have an exciting video to go over with you today. After a lot of work from the developers at Artistocrats, we have the newest and best version of the Scenario Editor to date. A few of the major highlights I will be covering in this video are Steam Workshop support, the new user interface for the editor, the new user interface for the trigger window, the new user interface for the AI menu, the new decoration feature, and more. We're going to begin our overview of the new features by inspecting the scenario editor itself. On the main area, we're going to begin our overview of the new features by inspecting the scenario editor itself. On the main menu of Terran Command, we still have the editor button. However, now when clicking it, it will bring up a list of all the current scenarios found in your scenarios folder located in My Documents, My Games, Starship Troopers, Scenarios. From here, you can select an existing scenario and start editing or playing exactly where you left off. Or you can create new. Previously, clicking the editor always created a new map. Now we have the option of getting straight back into where we last left off with editing an existing scenario with less clicks and less hoops. To show off the new user interface, I'm going to go ahead and create a new mission for this example. Just like before, when creating a new mission, we have the option of selecting our landscape and starting elevation. I'm happy with, I'm happy with these settings, so I'm going to go ahead and select Create New. After loading, we are introduced to the new user interface with the Scenario Editor. After a brief acclimation period, you will see the improvements made to the user interface overall. To start, we're going to be starting with the lower section here of the editor where we have the different tabs, units, terrain, levels, and decor. We have all the same options as before, and some areas are made more clearer than before. All the controls for selecting places units remains the same as before. So if we select units and then select a unit, we still have the options of setting the member count and setting the veterancy experience level, as well as the faction for that unit. And if we click this unit, we have the option to toggle unit emblem on and off and a much more clear mark as special unit. And then over here, we have the attach and change unit owner faction buttons. We can still rename the units just like before. and we can still filter them just like before. Terrain and levels are largely unchanged. However, a major improvement has been made with the disassociation of the arrow keys with the brush size and trigger windows. Now you can move your arrow keys without fear of the brush size changing on you or a trigger value being selected and then suddenly edited. Now, you can still select square or sphere for your terrain options, for your brush size. Moving on to levels, it is just like before where we have elevation select, edge selection, and slope selection with the same brush size drag bar and the square or circle shape brush size. The decor window has received minor changes in layout and look, and some icons are still missing a model. However, I want to highlight a few new decorations that can help you with polishing your maps, as well as a new feature that will be very welcome to those mission makers that are eye candy masters. So first, I'm gonna change my daylight settings in the settings to night. And then going back into decor, I'm going to select the light category. And then we have a couple options here called terrain lights. So we have a red light, a purple light, and a teal light. 
Now, right now, this doesn't seem like a huge thing, but I'm gonna, with the permission of Scuba Cat, here are some screenshots to show just how these l such little details can dramatically change the feel of your level. Just take a look at the difference between these two screenshots here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the time back to day. And I'm gonna go ahead and show off the next new feature for decorations. We can now free rotate any decoration. We've all seen this particular outpost tent or any other model that normally only has these four directions that it can be changed in. Now, by holding shift and then pressing O and P, you can free rotate any object in the decorations menu. So you can get that look just how you want. This is a gigantic win for decoration powerhouses. Just like before, you can search for different decorations through the filter menu here. Moving briefly to the top right section of the editor, we still have our mini map, as well as our instruction manual and access to the game option menus here. So we can change our audio, our graphics right from here. Moving next onto the left section of the editor, we have triggers, settings, players, objectives, and AI. Options, wherein you change the mission name and description is now called settings to differentiate it from the game options. This menu largely operates exactly the same as in any other version of the editor. Moving on to the players, there are a few new changes here. For example, when you add a new player, you now have the option to remove the player. So this is huge because if you accidentally created a player, you did not have the option to remove that player before. Be aware, when deleting a player, a prompt will warn you that hey, deleting this player will delete all the units that are owned by this player. So do keep that in mind. And in fact, I will demonstrate that very briefly here by placing down a couple engineers here and then deleting that player. So we can see that that unit is no longer there. Now, one thing I do want to stress is that deleting players is still a risky business so i would be very cautious before deleting a player i would almost recommend still changing ownership rather than deleting a whole player that's still a very experimental feature so be very cautious when attempting to delete an entire player faction that has units associated to it so one thing to also keep in mind is that game default units such as environment rogue Federation, the player, and Arachnid cannot be deleted. Objectives has received a visual update to remain consistent with the new user interface and operates the same as before. AI has received a huge improvement in UI overall. Now you can clearly see AI teams that you create for what faction, what task they're supposed to do, and just a whole, we can actually see the AI teams and tasks menu here. So do expect a video of this in the future for a deeper dive on how this system works now that we can actually see and play with it more clearly. Now onto the area I'm most excited about with this UI overhaul, the trigger window. The background has been altered and all fields are clearly visible. No more guessing where a trigger value is located. I will show this off by quickly showing briefings, dialogue pop-up, and music layer. I'm gonna also include music play, just to show the differences. Now with briefings, you can clearly see what avatar will be used when selecting what character will be displayed during this particular briefing. And just overall, everything is just much 
clearer. In addition, some conditions have received updates to more clearly explain the logic behind the trigger, such as unit status. There is now an is and is not logic here. This is much more accessible and easy to understand to all scenario makers. Additionally, the offensive create trigger has become more clear regarding the offensive objective or target. So we can clearly see nearest now clearly states nearest radio station. So that way we can clearly understand and help make better decisions on how our bug attack waves operate in our scenario. The last section I'm going to cover is this middle section here. Now some of these buttons are self-explanatory. From here, we can create a new scenario, open and, and edit a different scenario in our scenario folder, save or save as a different scenario, launch and publish. I'll get to this one in just a moment and exit. A lot of these are exactly as they need to be and fairly self-explanatory. There's a lot to explore with this new version of the editor. However, a major feature I want to show off right now is the Steam Workshop. When you are complete with your scenario and you are ready to publish it, instead of posting it to the Tarrant Command Discord, you will be able to upload directly to the Steam Workshop seamlessly. By selecting Publish, you are presented with a window to finalize the scenario's title, add a description, and if you are making updates to your scenario, just like I am here, video example, you can make a change log for what your new version has fixed or updated with. You can then select published for, so that way you can select, is this public? Is it just for my friends or is it just for me? And then you'll be able to view and agree the Steam Workshop contribution agreement and then get ready to publish. After publishing, your scenario will start processing and shortly after uploading to the Steam Workshop, it will be available to download. It might take a few minutes for Steam to approve the publication. Now that we're here on the Workshop, we can see and download other scenarios made by players. So if I head over to the Workshop, we can see collections that players have put together. This is how our campaign designers can put together their scenarios and string along and have one click download all scenarios that you currently have published. So subscribe to all is gonna be really huge. So the ease of installing scenarios has gone up dramatically. For example, if I wanna download one of uh, Snow's scenario here, if I want to install this scenario, all I have to do is click subscribe. Now. What's going to happen is seamlessly it's downloading the scenario and putting it where it needs to be. Now, the developers are currently working on making and improving this, but currently you do need to restart the game in order for the scenario to appear. Now, to access your scenario that you just downloaded from the workshop, all you have to do is select scenarios and play your scenario direct from the Steam Workshop category here. So again, Snow's scenario will appear here once I restart the game, but the developers are working on that so we don't have to close and reopen the game. Keep in mind, and this goes for me as well, mods are not supported on the Steam Workshop yet. This means that only scenarios that are built with vanilla in mind will be natively supported. However, I will create a guide at a later date if you want to include mods in your upload. Now, before you publish your scenario, I do recommend that you add a thumbnail to your scenario. I will be creating an updated full publication checklist video later on, but you can add a PNG directly to your scenario folder called 
thumbnail underscore main dot png or press the tilde key to open the console and type in update thumb this will automatically take a screenshot of whatever you're looking at and use it as the thumbnail for your scenario now with all of this said go join the open beta to take advantage of the new editor features and to gain access to the steam workshop that is all I have to cover on the scenario editor update at the moment and new and improved videos will be coming out in light of the enhancements to the editor as well as some new discoveries that have happened. To follow up on how to get access to the open beta and ask questions to the community, you can check out the Starship Troopers Terran Command Discord using the link below. Ask a question in the editor chat and the community will rally behind you to support you. Now, before we close out this video, I wanted to let you all know that I now have a Discord community for the YouTube channel. It's nothing terribly fancy, but it's a great hangout for people interested in my channel and want to deliver more feedback and in a collaborative fashion. You can check out the link for this in the description below. Thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.